Okay, now I want to talk about acceleration. Um, so anytime there's a changing velocity, you can have an acceleration. And there's a definition for average acceleration that I'll do first. Oops. Equals change in velocity over change in time. So let's take an example of that. Now, I know how to calculate the velocity of this car. If I calculate the velocity of the car, say if I know how far it moves from here to here, let's let this car roll down the hill. Okay. It moves over uh, from this point to this point in some period of time. Let's see if I can time how long that is. The length of that piece of track is about 20 centimeters. And I'm going to try to time when the car goes from here to here, see what its velocity was. Oops. Let me try that again. Okay, it looks like it was about 0 0.2 seconds. So the time was about 0 0.2 seconds. Um, and the velocity here, well, let me first point out what the velocity is at the beginning. At the beginning, the velocity was zero. I just gave it a tiny, tiny little nudge, and so it, was, it went from a, I could even just let it go from a standstill, if I start with it on the hill. So I let it go with a zero velocity, okay? So at the start, the velocity was zero. And then later, the velocity was, let's see, it was this distance here, 20 centimeters over 0 0.2 seconds. What is that? Let's see, 20 centimeters over 0.2 seconds, that would be um, by both by 2, that would be 10 over 0.1, so that would be 100 centimeters per second. So, the, velo so the, the, car, the train starts with a velocity of zero, and it ends with a velocity of 100 centimeters per second. We can say that while the train was going down the hill, it accelerated. So the change in velocity is the final velocity minus, minus the initial velocity. And that is final velocity, 100 centimeters per second, minus the initial velocity, which was zero centimeters per second. I'm going to subtract them. I better have them in the same units. So the change in velocity is 100 centimeters per second. 100 minus zero is 100. OK. Now, how long did it take? The problem now we have is there's an interval of time. There's a change in velocity. The velocity changed from zero to 100 meters per second in the time it took for the train to roll down the hill. How long was that time? Well, I didn't time it, so let's find out. I'm going to start with the train up here and find out how long it takes to get to the bottom of the hill, where it has that 100, meters per 100 centimeters per second. So I'll try that. Looks like it took about 0.7 seconds. So. The average acceleration, which you bought right as A with a bar on top of it, it's the same thing as average acceleration. That's the change in velocity over the change in time in which the velocity was changing. Okay, so the velocity changed from 0 to 100 centimeters per second, and the time it took was 0 0.68 seconds. Or I'll make that 0 0.7 seconds. So that's 100 centimeters per second over 0 0.7 seconds. Now, I'm not very good at math, so and I don't have a calculator handy, so I'm going to let you punch in the numbers. But I will get a number, which is going to be, let's see, let me guess, it'll be about 100 and 
25, let's say, centimeters per second squared. Notice seconds on the denominator here, and there's seconds in the denominator there too. All right, this is on the denominator, this is also the denominator. So if I've got centimeters per second over seconds, it's centimeters per second squared. Whenever you have an acceleration, the units are always going to be distance over time squared. So for example, you could have an acceleration which was had units of meters per second squared. That would be SI units. You could also have miles per hour squared. Uh, you could have lots of different units. Anytime you have a unit which is distance over time squared, then that could be an acceleration. Those are all valid units for acceleration.